our medicinal cannabis legislation has gone through now. So uh, it does three things. Um, firstly, it uh, deschedules CBD so that it's no longer an illegal product. Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, um, we've initiated a supply scheme. So um, there'll be a means, and that'll take a while to all filter through. We've got a, a group that's going to be um, overseeing that for the development, which will have industry people in it and you know users and all kinds of different people. Um, that uh, that group um, and that that they will be overseeing the scheme. As I said, the scheme itself will mean that we get products coming through of a consistent quality, mm-hmm. um, a known substance. Yep. Uh, because doctors and others will, simply won't prescribe it if they don't know what's in it. That's what yep, doctors do. Sure. They prescribe things that they know exactly what's in it. And the different strains of um, yep. recreational cannabis have different things in them. They might have different drug reactions if you prescribe them with this other one and so on. So to make sure, and, and the reason we're doing that is because there's a global shortage of these products that are proven or have evidence around them for certain conditions. Mm-hmm. Um, so Sativex is the one that's most well known. It's most widely available here. Um, there's really good evidence around Sativex for certain conditions. There's other conditions which is not such good evidence around. Um, and that's part of the challenge here. For some of these things, there isn't good evidence. Mm-hmm. Um, it's But it kind of people think it works for them. And, and so the third thing we've done in that scheme is make it um, provide a statutory defence for people who are in palliative care to be able to take what would otherwise be illegal cannabis because we've said, well, you're dying. Mm. <laughs> if it makes people feel better, um, we're not going to have time to do the science on that. We're not going to, if it works for them, let them have it. Yeah. So that's a compassionate thing while that scheme gets up and running because ideally we'd like it to be science-based where um, there's known benefits that people, and for a medicinal cannabis scheme, yep. where people can say this is a proven product for this condition and it's affordable. But actually for someone at the end life stage, anecdotal evidence matter. is enough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, they, they're going to die. They, they, yeah. can't, they won't have time to d- develop the kind of things you might do from smoking. So in, in that instance with someone who's passing away who, get, who yep. you basically turn a blind eye to, yep. do they have an, a, a, a way of getting that legally or do they then still have no. to use an illegal? And, that, and that's, that's okay. the, the criticism. And, and it was a... I mean, as we worked through it, it was one of the bigger chal- biggest challenges with where do you draw the line? Yep. You know, in, in practice, police use a lot of discretion around right. that these days. And there was a recent court case uh, in the past week, I think, where um, a green theory um, uh, was basically excused um, because the situation was compassionate. So a judge has actually made a clear ruling on that, not just the police. That's um, interesting. And because there's also news that I did see this week um, – in the Waitakere's in Auckland, there was a whole bunch of cannabis burnt off, and a bunch of it was medicinal mm. strains and stuff from from Green Fairy. So, yes, yeah, I, I I was interviewed on this. I mean, there's, right. there's people uh, rightly saying, "Is this is this really in the spirit of where we're headed as a country?" Um, and um, you know, I, the police, I have to say, have moved a long way in mm. my in my estimation over over um, these issues, and uh, particularly around. Um, you know, looking at how how do we move into the future? Um, we've we've um, been really clear around synthetic drugs, and we're about to put some legislation through uh, that will uh, say that police, when they when they're um, ar- arresting people with drugs, if it's for personal possession, that they should treat it first and foremost as a health issue, and right. actually put that in law, um, so that uh, that is the expected response, unless there's uh, any mitigating. You know, if there's children so involved not, or they're fearful of some other. Is that not kind of decriminalising it without decriminalising it though? Um, look, th- what it, what it's doing is it's codifying what the police are pretty much almost already doing now. There's mm-hmm. I forget how many um, people are in prison for possession, but it's tens rather than hundreds in New Zealand now for possession. Um, uh, dealers, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the international best practice seems to be that if you want to reduce drug related harm. You treat the, those who are caught in the web of addiction. You you support them. Yep. Um, but those who are dealing and peddling, um, you go after them. That that's in any kind of health response. There's it's an interesting thing that there's, there's a variety of things which at first might seem contradictory, but but that's the best evidence at the moment.